It's time to see one of the greatest fights in welterweight boxing history. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself to those of you who have never watched this channel. Boy, you are late to the dance. They call me Eric A. Bradley, a.k.a. you know what it is. The real fight doctor in the building. And we break the fight world down, round by round. Nice. We welcome you to the fight show. We are going to do something that I used to do as a youngster coming up into the game. I love film study. So this film study segment pretty much gives you a real in-depth breakdown of what you were actually watching. It's not for debate. It's sort of like the series Detail on ESPN. What we do is make sure that you understand what exactly it is you're looking at. How do you apply these things in the gym? And what benefit does it bring when you understand these skills and know when to adapt? So throughout the broadcast, we'll be popping in some questions in between rounds. This, like I said, for those who have never watched this fight, it's one of the most epic fights. So let me know where you're from. Round one, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Thomas the Hitman Hearn. Starting it all over. Let's rock. Leonard circling his stand, going left, then going right. Never giving him a stationary target. Backs away from a couple of right-hand leads by Hearn. Right-hand counterpunch just a little bit short by Thomas Hearn. Sort of a slapping jab to settle for the right. Right hand by Hearns, misses once more. Leonard Ray taunts him because Hearns is so much taller. Of course, the conversation about Thomas Hearns and the considered opinion is that his right hand is only as good as his left hand, and his left hand is one of the best. Nice job by Ray Leonard. Up good, the that chest was the of counterpunch. Thomas Hearns. Good counterpunch. I think that made Hearns a little mad. He's going after him. Very fast pace early on here in the first round. Remember, we talked about the heat. It could become a factor. All right. That right, that was round one. And as you watch the fight, what you're noticing is there is a lot of boxing and moving in that round. When you see a guy like Sugar Ray Leonard operating around the ring, what he's doing is filling out your guys. So the, the objectivity in round one was basically highlight and get the jab going. The footwork, ring circling creating the angles and making sure that Tommy Hearns does not land that representative jab of his and that right hand that was starching catch. And for those of you who do did not see the guy fight live when he was actually fighting in his prime, that's Tommy Hitman Hearns. He was starching guys. So you can pull up Thomas Hearns highlights and you'll see some of the most devastating knockouts to date. Like, you won't see knockouts like that, even currently. Guys were getting starched. So what Sugar Ray Leonard was doing was taking away that power and seeing what he had. Let's get into round two and say see exactly what was going on and what was the story behind round two. Let's get it. Round one comes to an end. And Hearn sticks Ray Leonard and Leonard Fane's going down after the round is over. Round two. Under the 115 mark now go, to go in the second round. And Hearns is going to let it again, trying to taunt Hearns. And Hearns catches it with the right hand. Later has a slight bruise over the left cheek. A slight little abrasion over the left cheek. Left jab scores on the cheek of Thomas Hearns. A little bit of swelling under the left eye, as you mentioned, Randy, on the face of Sugar Ray Leonard. Early, there's a good, good right, right hand. Good right Sugar hand. Ray Leonard. It looks like it did sting him. Right. Again, that left jab landing on the cheek is a left hand by Ray that backs up Thomas Hearn. Boom. There we go again. So round two, what do you feel like was the more pronounced thing? Hard shots. So why was that? Why was it that Sugar Ray Leonard being on his toes just in the first round meaning he didn't want no smoke in the first round, started playing around with Hearns, getting in his head by touching him after the bell and pretending him, pretending that he was actually hurt like Ali used to do with guys. That gets up under your guy's skin, especially guys who are hitters. So let me see. Well, I see some, some people checking in. Hey, Coach Nelson. What's good? What's good? 
New York is in the house. Golden Gloves, 32 and 1. Randy, is it Remy? Remy, good to see you, man. That's good stuff to know about you. Austin, what's going on, John Neal? We're about to get into the next round. So let's see what this actually entailed. Round number three. See if you can pick up on it, and we will finish this in such a magnificent way. Let's get it popping. Next round. How do you sit? How do you take this situation and turn it back into your favor if you are Hearns? To emphasize of the two fighters of how good they are, and he knows how good Sugar Ray is in moving. Combination that time by Hearns. Once more, scores on Ray against the ropes. knows that he better stop smiling get to work. Leonard is starting to work inside a little bit more now. He fought the first two and a half pounds outside. Right hand by Hearns. Stands Leonard straight up and he backs off. That's what that's what Angelo meant by knocking down the punch and throwing. And yeah, the round yeah. three. Boom. Round three. Let me see who else checked in. Let me see what you got. And 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 when you see that kind of thing, gamesmanship, exactly. And that's what you got to have sometimes when you got a monster in front of you. It's a big deal, man. Great jab. That was good work he was putting out. What's happening, Terry Hill? It's good to see you in the brother. Check in. Check in. Charlotte in the Charlotte is in the house. What's up, brother? It's good to see you, man. Welcome to this breakdown of Sugar Ray Leonard versus Hitman Hearns. And if you truly want to understand, at the end of this, what we're going to do is give you one big mashup of what you just witnessed. And it's going to be very cool. Great secrets, learning things that go back over 100 years without a doubt. So I can't wait to share that with you. So make sure you stay on board and let us know where you're from. If you're just checking in, this is the time for the check in. Next, we're going into round four. That jab ain't no joke. That's right. So let's see what the actual and we'll get to you other guys' comments as we get going. But let's see what the definition of round four was. That jab. Let's get it. Round four coming up. Let's get it. Leonard standing straight up and Hearns is leading foot. Good right hand. Good right hand by Leonard. So Ray Leonard continuing to get the more important blows in the last couple of rounds. Got himself off balance, but comes right back up. Hearns, for some reason, looks like he's slowing down. I don't know if he's trying to control. Good enough to right Left hand. to the stomach and a right to the head. That was a good counter punch by Sugar Ray Leonard. And again, Ray getting the better of the exchange here. Ducks under that sweeping left hook. Takes a left to the body and a right to the head as Hearns comes back with a combination and Ray retreats. Those are some good punches by both fighters. Swelling under Ray Leonard's left eye. It does not seem any worse than it was in the second round. That was on top of the forehead on the left side. It still hurt. Good left hook. It's partially blocked by Leonard. Five seconds remain in round four. Another good right hand by Hearns. It, it was blocked. It was missed. And a round four. And so far, as you mentioned, it's living up to its billet. Wow. The level, of, the, the, the level of intensity in this fight, uh, you don't really see that much these days like that. Like these guys come out to fight. They were true professional prize fighters. So there's been a, a humongous deficit in that in this day and time. And for most of you, most of you, you did not have the opportunity to live through this era in the 80s. It was absolutely as sizzling as what you're watching, man. But you can imagine watching it live. So you're seeing some dazzling footwork. You're seeing some difference in identities. Sugar Ray came out first with the jab and the footwork. 
I mean, boxing around using the ring. Then you saw Hearns change the game up in the second as well by starting to use his legs. Sugar Ray Leonard is starting to change the language of the fight by boxing and then walking in and delivering harder shots. So he's bending his knees and he's delivering the shots to the body and head. So watch this as you see the different language. And the language of round four was pressure tactics, being able to utilize the walking forward stuff. So we're going to show you a little bit of stuff that really mimics all of these things in the segment directly after this fight. So let's check it out, man. Round number five, it's about to go down. And I will catch you guys checking in after round five. So hang tight. Let's get it popping. It's worth the round is very crucial in the judge's mind. If you take the last 10 seconds, you can count on that it could probably go your way. So both fighters, if you don't like to just come out and start, start winning. Another thing worth pointing out is third Angelo Dundee between rounds two and three, the right hand by Ray Leonard. Fight has been fought for the large part at long range. Ray again taunts and misses a combination there. Now it's a little showbiz. Well, look, this is the show business capital here. Both landing jabs. Leonard, like I said, a little more leery of Hearns' power, so he has to back off a little bit more when he's talking. Now, right there, what you witnessed was the jab really started to take over for Hitman Hearns. He found a place, he found a space, and he started to insert the jab, creating a lot of discomfort for Sugar Ray Leonard at that period of time. So Sugar Ray Leonard had to use antics to show that it wasn't really affecting him, but it was, man. When you got a guy that rangy, he was six foot one, but he was rangy like a guy that's about six foot five. The arms down to his feet. I mean, hand skills. I mean, quickness with the punch, too. Take away his aggression with finesse. Yeah. What's up, Rock? It's good to see you, brother. Let me see who else checked in. Amen, brother. What's up, Rich? Welcome to the fight show. It's good to see you, man. Everybody, it's all love. Phone booth. Yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard was trying to switch it up and put it in a phone booth. Let me see who else you got. Agree, missed the error. That error was absolutely insane. It was like pay per view every fight. They didn't know how to do like these guys doing today. The you know, constant finesse, constant stay away from a fight. These guys were prize fighters. Still some good ones, but more, yeah, more the exception than the rule. Yeah, uh, there are more of the guys who get away from a real fight then pr pursue the fight. So let's check the next round out, see what it looks like, and let's see what the language was for this round that just passed in round five. Let's see if any of you can really uh, identify what you saw mostly in that round because the key in that round was countering and setting traps, which what we're going to do when we get done with this fight. We're going to show you some really cool stuff. So stay tuned. Keep it locked. Make sure you get your pen and pad because it's going down on the fight show. Let's see the next round, round six. Both fighters talking in the corner, not really taking any deep drawing kinds of breaths. Good right hand by Ray Leonard. Co-trainer with Angelo Dundee of Sugar Ray Leonard just trying to make Good a good counter to the body. Got no worse in the no. four rounds since it happened. Stay the same. I didn't see him before the fight. It could have been there before the fight. I didn't really pay attention. Ray gets inside. Left oh, hand hurts. Hurt. Hurts. Back hurt. Hurts. 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 Combinations once more by Ray Leonard. Hearn's legs are still like jelly. Hearns is definitely hurt, and he's not bringing up that left hand, how he got hit. Ray not wasting any punches, content to take his time here. That's a body shot hurting. That body shot hurt, Hearns. Once more, Leonard stalking him. 20 seconds remaining in the round. Plenty of time. Hearns is against the ropes, and he has definitely had the starch taken out of him here. Hearns isn't holding on. He's not a good defensive fighter. 
Right hand misses by Leonard, gives Hearns another moment. He's still hurt, though. Combinations right above us. Hearns goes wheeling back once more. Against the ropes again as we come to the end of round six. Man, did he bring the smoke in that round or what? Now, I want to know if you understand the importance of knowing how to be tactically sound and the skills in which you learn in training camp and induce and increase your muscle memory matter. And when you see someone like Sugar Ray in this round here, he started to, after setting traps, his objective was to begin countering the jab, going over the top, getting closer and inside the paint, raking Hearns to the thin body, taking away his legs. That's what That was the system in round number six. So as you'll see here, that creates what we call something that you have to face, which is those demons. And I hope y'all are enjoying me representing the Howard Cozell wide world of sports gold blaze today. So uh, in special memory of one of the greatest to ever do it, my man, Howard Cosell, number seven. Let me check you guys out and see what you got in the comment box over here. Sugar, uh, yeah, Sugar was pushing the pace and trying to get Tommy respect for his own big shots. Definitely slowed Tommy's pace, raking the body, raking the head, trying to make sure Tommy's legs are dead. And that's kind of what his whole focus was. So when you look at a guy like that with the, the constant rhythm and the constant motion, he's fighting while he's doing it, though. He's not just getting out of town. He's getting out of town and he's trying to hit you with bombs. And that's what Sugar Ray Leonard did. And he could throw those babies in flurries and they were all hard. So. Just understand what you're watching when you're looking at Sugar Ray. That was a different era. Savage Beast. Let's see what round seven looked like. Continue to drop your comments, man. We got your lock. Let's see what it looks like. Work time. A bit off on his counterpart right now. Burns throws the right hand. His left hand comes all the way down when he throws that right hand. Throwing lunging punches right now. Is in close. Murray has been most effective in round three, and now is starting to get in on his man just a little bit more. Burns trying to measure and stay at arm's length. Ray going back to the Good up to good up to Once more, Hearns backs Hearns up. Hearns is hurt. Against the ropes, and he is hurt. Hearns is hurt. Leonard again pacing himself now has plenty of time in this round. Just past the one minute mark. I don't think Hearns is going to weather this off. I really don't. He's going to stay and keep those cobwebs until Leonard either finishes them off or he's just going to lose the decision. Hearns I don't think it's going to go to the go the distance. Those left hooks to the body right there are hurting. And right now Thomas Hearns is an open book for Ray Leonard. Backs up against the ropes. And his leg almost buckled on him. He almost didn't get his back. Leonard getting a lot of pounding to Thomas Hearns who unquestionably is hurt. Hearns' his right hand is down. That's where he's getting hit to worry too much about Hearns' strength because he's giving a lot away. That body punch hurt. Hearns. Just about doubled up Thomas Hearns. Let it have things all his own way now. Hearns is Hearns. really covering up on those body punches. Trying to hold on as best he can, but Leonard is scoring just about at will, not missing any punches. Very important. Left hand sends Hearns back to the ropes again, and it wasn't a particularly good left hand. Hearns just leaning on him. Leonard trying to find the one punch. Good body shot by Hearns. Another good right hand right there. Scores and sends Hearns into a neutral corner. And that's because his hands are down. He can't get them up in that corner. you got to have them up. Thomas Hearns looking every part of the beaten fighter now. Another right hand drives him back into the ring post. Five seconds remaining now, round seven. Crowd is on its feet here in Vegas. We come to the end of the round. Ooh, boy. <laughs> That is what you call a maniacal attack, man. So as you see, round seven, the language was attack, attack, rake the body, rip the body, uppercuts, hooks, overhands, keep the big boy occupied with not knowing what direction. So he's throwing misdirectional punches. So uh, when you're looking at these things, man, it, it takes so many different drills to train a guy to be able to do that. And when should he do it? 
and how hard should he throw? When does he know when to push the gas tank uh, or push the pedal so he can, because you don't want to over tap your gas tank. We got some new check-ins. And after this check-in, we're going to let the remainder of the fight play. And then you'll just see things going across the bottom of the screen. So stay locked, keep everything um, chipper because this is how it used to be when we watched and what's going on champ. It's good to see you, man. Ren Renee box young man. Sugar was definitely punching hard. Yeah. He, and people thought he was just a pretty boy, but he, he was bringing the malice out here. You know, I feel like if Tommy had an inside game, he would have been the best out of the four. Yeah. Well, that's just like saying if sugar Ray was six, five, he would have been the best out of the four. Or if, if Hagler, you know, you mean the, the, you got to be careful about that, you know, because it's all about what you got and not speculating and stuff. So, because what it is, it is what it is when you get inside of that boxing ring and it's a tough thing. And uh, the roughest part of it is training. You know, you can't pretend that you can go be playing around in the house and John Iceman Scully just posted a very, very cool video of this guy walking into a, uh, man, a, a another guy's gym and wanting him to want to spar. You want to spar with the coach? So the coach put him in there and, and, and showed him, smoked him and it made it clear to him. Street fighting ain't the same as boxing. Boxing is a sport. It's the ultimate gladiator sport. And when you come down to boxing, you better understand it's an entirely different language out there. So you will hear that again later on in this broadcast because we're going to get back to it and we're going to let the remainder of the rounds play out. Make sure you check in. You can drop your lines and I'll make sure I keep them up on the board. I want to know, see who, who is identifying what exactly is going on with this fight. Let's get it on round eight and on on the fight show. Let's get it popping. Work time. Pedal, try to cut the ring off on Sugar Ray Letter now, so a reverse tactic as you mentioned, Randy. Left hand scores. Looks like Kern's almost slipped there or something. There's a looping right once more that sends Hearns back to the corner. It wasn't very hard, but I think it did bother him a little bit. Hearns laughed it off, but like I said, every little bit hurt. Hearns on his bicycle now, and Ray just walking after him, just waiting. Another right hand. Going after Hearns, who's up on his bicycle now. 20 seconds for me here in the eighth round. That one was a little bit low. Too great from those hard punches. Ray continuing to stalk him. His left hand that might have been Hearns' best punch in a couple of rounds. That was, that was a very good left hook. He had his body in full control of that left hook. So Thomas Hearns started to come back just a little bit here against Ray Leonard. Whether it's a case of two little too late remains to be seen. Right that was Hearns on the glove. That was very obvious. It was very dumb knowing that he had what's to hurt him again. So he jumped in with that left hook. Left hand that time by Thomas Hearns. This has been an effective round for Thomas Hearns so far. So far this round I give the Hearns. And the round nine. Standing that took that was blocked by Sugar Ray Leonard. Leonard again just continuing to kind of stalk, and Hearns continuing now to circle on Ray Leonard, which was Leonard's st strategy in the early rounds. Hearns is looking very fluid, right hand, but it didn't really seem to hurt. Left hand right there by Ray Leonard. Back turns up again as the right hand comes up short. Thomas Hearns right now has a mouse under his left eye and in the corner as Ray comes on wing with the right hand. Good job by Hearns. Nice right, right hand. hand right there. To hurt him and then follow up. Right hand again on the side of the head of Ray Leonard. And a left hand of the body. That first right hand wasn't very hard. The second one he loaded up on and missed. Once more, Thomas Hearns with a combination of the face of Ray Leonard. Not take a backward step from any of those punches. That left hand snaps the head of Hearns back. Oh. And Leonard taking two quick shots. Comes right back with a left hand of his own. Hearns continuing to press the action. Going to the body of Ray Leonard now. Doing 
doing so very effectively. Leonard is starting to back up a little bit. And Hearns is finding that eye with some consistency now. There's a right hand, two right hand. Right hand. Good jab by Leonard, very effective. Hearns just working on that eye of Leonard now. Hearns is just sticking with the left hand. Hearns is consistently finding the eye of Ray Leonard, and it is getting consistently worse. fight is right now. It looked as though it's going to be all over for Thomas Hearns. Good right hand by Hearns. Leonard. That hurt Leonard Hearns. Right Hearns guys has to tie him up or Leonard something. Leonard now is going for the whole boat. Hitting him with combinations. Leonard is good at everything he's got. Hearns starts down but grabs and now goes down through the ropes. Leonard hits the corner. Leonard Hearns says he's not hurt. He was grabbing on to the ropes. But Hearns is shaking his head coming up. He does the referee up. said that it wasn't a knockdown. I think Hearns is hurt. Is that saying I'm hurt? See what Ray Leonard has left. This is very important for Thomas Hearns to hold on, which he's trying to do. Under a minute left. Leonard goes Hearns, after him again. Leonard right there was hitting on the break. Leonard has a bad habit of hitting on the break. Only Hearns looks he like he, he weathered through a little bit. Was standing there punching with him. Leonard comes after him again. This is a wild right hand. Hearns on his bicycle once more. A left hand slips by the cheek. Hearns' his power is left hand. You know, he's throwing those sluggish punches. There's a left hand that loops in, does not really score big, and a right hand does score. He's got to keep his hands up. Comes right in. Hearns leaning on him, definitely in trouble. Ray trying to put his hand away. There's Leonard punching left. after him when the referee's breaking him. Leonard's getting tired, though. Another right hand by Leonard. Hearns down to clean the ropes again, six to one knee. Leonard is sent to the neutral corner. He five has run out in the round here. But Hearns is on his feet. Outstanding round for Ray Leonard. His feet, he does not seem very rubber leg. Leonard rushes out to meet him. A right hand of the body sends Hearns immediately into the ropes. Hearns is still very, very sapped from, the, from those punches. It'll take more than just a minute rest to, to re recuperate him. Leonard wants to put his man away right here. Does not want this fight to go to a decision. Hearns on his bicycle. Leonard stalking him. Hearns scores with a couple of punches. Leonard takes his head. Leonard continuing to stalk his man. Two minutes remaining. A right hand and that hurts him. Hearns is not down yet. A left hand as Ray thought his man was going to go and he didn't and Hearns is still on his feet. Ray taunts him now. Hearns tries to get out of the corner. Cannot do it yet. Now is in long range. A left hand, two left hands against the rope. Hearns is reeling. Leonard is still tired. Hearns got a lot of guts. At least Hearns' hands are up. Hearns is very weak though. He's Leonard really weak. He's trying, hurting. Trying to go downstairs is Ray Leonard. Hearns just trying to hang on here. Left hand sends Hearns back against the ropes again. And that's all. It's over. And Ray Leonard is the undisputed welterweight champion of the world against a very game Thomas Hearns. You cannot say enough about both of these fighters. But I knew fully well that uh, the last few rounds were deciding factors. And I gave it all I had. Angelo told you at one point there that you're letting it get away. And the next round you went out and you and you heard him. Were you, what were your th thoughts then? Well, I knew I was behind, but I knew it was close. I just had to pull it out, and uh, it was tough. Boom. I seen some great comments, man. <laughs> you were all right about it. When it comes down to the way he used to throw punches, it sounded like they got on bag gloves and they hit in the bag. <laughs> the power, the punches, the flurries, and you could tell the difference between the flurries this guy throws and the flurries that the guys throw today. They, they haven't been taught how to do it. So that was the consummate shoe shine where they're throwing and raking it and they bring it up to the head. But Sugar Ray Leonard had a, a unique ability to throw him over the top at the same time. So he can throw through the body, bring it up to the head, then come over the top and rake you at like at the top of the brain point. Boom. I mean, his abilities, man, the, the consummate flurry just press and someone put on the screen, the stamina was insane. 
beautiful shoe shine to the body. Yeah, it was, Renee. It was just a powerful display of what boxing isn't today, at the, especially at the, 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 the bigger weight classes from 47 on up. Uh, you will not see uh, very few people mimic what's going on. The next thing I'll have you do is tell me what the storyline of this match was, meaning when you finish seeing it and processing this, what was that storyline to you? You know, and I'm going to tell you right here in the comments right here. And you did see a lot of pressing. All right. And that's what happens when you're able to adapt and adjust. You saw fighting off the back foot. These are the things that I'm telling you that were in the fight. These are the things that there are a lot of guys who are like the Mexican style fighter. They don't use these tactics. You're in a fight like this. If you don't have them, you do want to get smashed. All right. So that's why you look at Hearns, even though he was from Panama. When he fought Hearns, he walked right into kind of like the right hand. He didn't have back foot tactics as much as the typical fighter but he was a great offensive fighter defensive hand skills you saw countering inside that's another big nugget let me know if you had written that down and then we're going to show you another clip based upon what counter punching takes and the entire storyline of this fight was adapting that was king. The adaptability of these fighters was absolutely second to none. They all took on different identities during the fight. Hearns was coming out pressing. Second round, Sugar Ray came out pressing. No fight that you've seen currently in modern day have the two fighters change identities in such a quick amount of time. And back and forth, by the sixth round, Ray had turned into an absolute Tyson version of himself because that jab of Thomas Hearns was affecting that eye. And when you see that, man, it's an entirely different. Uh, whenever you're the guy working the corner, your strategic cache has to be on point because if not, what you're going to do is find out that you don't know a lot. And that's why we train our coaches the right way for every situation and scenario. So think about that. And I'm going to show you a couple of the drills that we teach in our online um, training. So we show the guys how it's done, how it looks, some of the drills that are necessary. So take a look at this and the speed of it. This was about 60 seconds. So enjoy the take. It's going down. We always love to give you that funk. You know what we do. Inside counter punching. All right, guys, what you're seeing here is the basics to counter punching, learning how to slip. We're going to start right here in tier two. As you see, the punch is coming in. You have to react quick. And at the same time, you got to be ready to catch, slip, and roll. As we speed up the sequence, you can see the reaction. You become a better counter puncher. These things are imperative. Our counter punch training workout really gives you the reaction and the necessary motor skill to really react to punches and become a better boxer inside of the ring. You can speed the drill up, you can slow the drill down. Either way, hands must stay up, elbows must be blocking, constantly using elbows, shoulders, hands. Now you see here, we slow it back down and make sure that we have our punch logistics tight. Your defense is landing specifically on the point that's necessary, blocking the eardrum and then countering. Basic shots, keep it nice and clinical. And to make sure that you get better, you can try using our counter punch download, which is amazing. is just another little taste of working on your skill drills and if you need work and help on specific things like you're having trouble with footwork if your defense has holes in it or you really need to work on enhancing your offensive prowess it's a powerful thing when you see that 
inside skill set. Now, you let me see what you guys are saying. Yeah, he danced in and out. But your biggest thing is to realize when when you see the skills that it takes, you looked at that fight. Did you see the similarities of the things that was happening on the inside that Sugar Ray Leonard was able to do and Tommy Hearns wasn't able to defend? You know why? As great as some of those teachers were, like Emmanuel Stewart, Thomas Hearns inside counterpunch skill set was lacking big time. So he was just getting unloaded on and they had to learn the hard way, come back in the next fight, do a little bit better. Still was a tough fight, but these are the type of drills that helps you enhance that boxing cachet. And that's why this page is second to none because we can talk about it, but we are be about it as well. So Sugar Ray's footwork was incredible. He controlled the fight with his footwork. Absolutely, man. That's spot on, my man. Gerald Jones is in the building. Man, I love you on board, man. You, I like your insight. You give, you give what you know. That's good stuff. Now, let's take a quick look on what this all looks like when you're on the inside in the boxing ring, getting that work in on the low, low, and see the speed the pace and the level of reaction that it takes to execute one of these things. Now, just think you just saw some stuff on the outside. Now you're going to see it turned up on the inside and your whole mind got to switch to ropes, soft mat and corners. All of those things are new variables now, so it'll be different. Let's check it out. Thank you. Good. Bam. Now, when you see that, what you're looking and seeing now is how to turn up your motor skills, your reaction. And that's a reaction type drill. Hands up. Now you got to think about how to move and what direction you need to move in. And that drill to capture that took a pretty long time. It went through in under a minute. But what it took to get that drill to that level and the, the amount of licks you take, that prepares you for battle at a very high level. And that's kind of what we show you. That's why we put our stuff in the, in the same realm. And inside you saw Sugar Ray dipping, slipping over to the side, raking to the body, digging them shots and digging them. And when he hit them, he hit with thump. And that's what you call digging down into the concrete with your toes and bending those knees and throwing those shots. And if you watch, you could see, our guys taking that moment and bending them knees and start to get more in that language. That's tier three. Let me see what you got here, my man. Hey, coach, I feel jabs. And cross don't work from the inside range. Well, it depends on how you you, you have to learn different ways to throw the jab and the crosses. Uh, any thoughts on what punches you should be using when you're working from the inside only. I just showed you that video and what you saw is short uppercuts to the solar plexus, hooks to the body on the outside of the elbow, and then bring the hook up top to the head, wipe the nose with the short right hook. And it's a, it's a bevy of combination. So this is why we had this for you. Go up here and it's a bundle today. You can get this video right here. It's about over, it's over an hour. And then I think it's footwork and a, in a conditioning drill, I mean, uh, footwork in a heavy bag combination, you get a big bundle of it, man. It's crazy hype. So that, if you go into the comment box, you can see the link in the comment box. As this pushes it down to the comment box, click on it and just take a look at it. And if you are trying to learn how to learn each method and step, First, you got to get the muscle memory by using the exercise. So you have to get the repetition constantly. Just remember this. Make sure that you understand how important it is to know that 
there's one drill after the next. You can't just look at a skill and then just take the skill and think that that's going to be the thing to help you take your wallet, pull out your card, get this kind of material for learning purposes. Because once you start to get the learning material, you'll start to see your entire game change and turn into another level. And that's a powerful thing whenever you're working on becoming good. Even if you're goofing off, there's so many people that order our stuff who don't even do it at a gym. They just kind of like to have the learning material. So today you get like a bundle. It's a trifecta. So I think it's like maybe 57 bucks. It's not even this. This is what this is by itself. So you're getting like three. So take the time, go up there and check it out. You know, we, we don't take it for what it's worth, man. Just like showing you these, 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 these drills and these fights. It's a big thing that when you're learning this stuff, man, it just takes a backseat to everything to have the guide. And with this one is that, that, that guide that you learn and use to train and um, your defense and your reaction and your attention to detail. It shows you so many different layers on how to use the outside of the ring stuff and then bringing it into the ring, you'll hear that term, transferring it into the ring. And you can't get that by looking at a video. You have, I mean, a, a clip. You have to really see how we progress these guys in that skill. And that's why it looks like the way Sugar Ray Leonard and those guys look. So check out the science of counterpunching. And that was the language of this fight. They were able to adapt and counterpunch. And that's who wins the fight. So if you're a boxing coach, you need to get up to that website. The link's down in the description. I'll put it on the screen so you guys can see it, but go snag that thing up. Science of counterpunching. It's in a bundle today. So enjoy that. Uh, the next and, and final drill that I'll show you guys before we get winded up is the beautiful layering when you use mitts to do it and help you develop this skill set. So take a look at this. And this is how we help transfer your skill set into the ring. And then I'll come back and check out your stuff. You're welcome, uh, Ryu, Drew, anytime, man. Just make sure when you're learning, uh, request to join the School of Boxing group so you can really have a place where you can put your videos and people can help you, you know, correct what you're doing or learn some different things from different guys who are training at a top level because they're being taught. I hope that all makes sense to you guys and uh, love the active defense. These guys are displaying. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's important that you do this. And as a coach, I had to make sure that they did it so much until it was until catching and countering was your nightmare that night in that month and that in that three month. So these segments, uh, the training methods, they last three months and before the muscle memory is starting to settle in. And believe it or not, it's not as quick as that. So you'll use that drill and then you'll stop doing it, but you won't have it in your muscle memory. You come to the gym, we'll be your grade, we'll be your test. And when you come in there, you're going to realize you don't want to smoke. Because I always make sure that people know before you get into our ring, this is an educational science project you're about to take part in. You better not have any holes in your game. Because if you say you are coming to spar, you will get exposed if you don't have or if you have any holes in your game. And um, once again, another little thing on the on the counter punching. And uh, it just gives you more insight to uh, what actually goes into this and this is about being in the ring working with mitts and uh don't take it a like jab that. out there is to do what that's gonna be your move mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, 
see. You hear that chant? We make champions. Yes, brother. Go do your thing, man. And uh, yeah, it'll be there for you guys tomorrow. You can pick it up tomorrow, but just do it, man. Uh, it's for you. You know, it's 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 work that was put into it. Uh, the guys came on and we just we made it happen, man. Get your camp started and, and keep going, man. Keep moving. Let's take the game to the next level. Yeah. Well, I've done what I needed to do. So, yeah, I take all the accolades because I know we put in the work. So we appreciate that, MMFB217. I love your tag, buddy. Welcome, buddy. It's, it's all good, man. We, we we doing what we supposed to do. So that's all we got for right now. But until next time, continue blessings at Godspeed. Remember, next the week after next, we will be having... Buddy McGurr, none other than one of the best to ever do it. Lace him up and in the ring and one of the greatest mock boxing minds in the world today. So long. Thanks again. Be sure to tell your friends that we're getting it popping on the fight show. So long, guys. I hope you enjoyed this time and learned a little bit more about boxing. Peace.